is welcome to the first of a series this is going to be my midweek mailbag and the whole idea is that i've realized i get a lot of postage and you know i do some videos and i don't always show you where these things are found so i thought we'll make it interesting i'll open some post tell you some reasons why i've got it it may give you some ideas it might just be interesting it's a bit like christmas really guys so we're just going to crack on and we're just going to do this midweek mailbag. Anyway, I've got an Arduino here. This is just something that's been messing around with at the minute. Let me move that out the way. So let's have a look, see what post we've got. So you go, guys. A few parcels here. So we're going to crack on and we're going to get some of these open now. So we'll make a start. So, this is something from China. Let's say what it is. Because sometimes you can have a little bit of a giggle when it actually doesn't tell you what it is. And it doesn't. Let's get it open. What have we got in here? Ah. Right, we have got lots of the CCTV plugs that I use. These are the 2.1 millimeter plugs and essentially I use them for a lot of things. I use them for the controllers and you, essentially you just screw your wire straight in there or in there. I usually have one on me layout, one on a controller and I can switch your controllers out. I have one on my DCC controller, one on my DC controller. So these are the CCTV plugs so let's have a look at the listing shall we all right guys these are what i've got these i've got two lots of these there's 10 pairs of male and female dc power jack plugs as you can see we've got the male connector and then the males and the females and we actually get 10 in there. What did I get? A £4.10. That's not bad for two pairs. That works out, what, 20 pence a piece? 40 pence for a pair? And to be honest, I've seen people selling these just in pairs, for like £1.50. Yes, these are from China. Let's have a look. Does it say anything else? There we go. The 2.1 by 5.5 millimeter DC power plug connectors. The strong plastic internal sizes, we've got 2.1, externals 5.5, and it measures 1.5 inches long, 0.55 inch wide, 0.5 inch thick. And the female jack is exactly the same, really, apart from they decided to put the measurements in millimeters on this one. So there you go, they're used for, it says CCTV, but well, I mean these things are used by all sorts and I think they're great for little projects, they're great to power your track and there we go, so that's the first of the items. Right then, the next of my items, what's it saying here, power cables, let's have a look shall we, power cables. Ah, okay. Right, right, we've got some crop clips and we've got some on the pin headers and I've got some on the other headers. Right, what are these for? These are just, I'm going to use these as test leads. So let's just rip one off. Right, I'll tell you. This is something I use occasionally, and this is what we call a resistor bank. And it's just a quick and dirty way of getting different resistances. If you look at the bottom of there, I've got two pins there. And the idea is, I can just literally put one of these over one pin. I can get another one out. Let's have a look. Put that on the other pin. That's my resistor. 
then I can just wind straight up into a circuit. So that's the reason we've got the females. And the males, well, as you know, we've got me a little Arduino here, and this is called a breadboard. This is really what we sort of rough circuits out on. If I take one off the end, essentially you've got a pin in there. I can just plug that into my board and I can just clip up to something. So they're basically just test leads for prototyping. That's all they actually are. So yeah, we've got some males and we've got some female test leads. So we'll take a look at the thing and see what it says. So here we go. 10 pin Arduino crocodile alligator clip. We've got male, we've got female. I think I went for the 20 centimetre lead. This is showing the 10 pins for the female. We'll have a quick look. There we go. As you see, we've got the crocodile clips, different colours. That's the male version. That's the female version. And they're just test leads, just for making up electronic projects. Nice and simple. Well, that's what we need, just like me. Uh, what does it say about the product? Anything especially? It says two in one alligator clips, a jump wire, 10 pins, 10 semi, 30 centimeter male, female crop clip test leads for Arduino, Raspberry Pi, Makey Maker, and 3D print prototypes. And it just says it's a convenient way to prototype. So there you go. That is it. We've got all different colours. It says it's high grade. So there you go, guys. That is what it is. So the next item in the mailbag. Do we have anything here? It's come from Germany. And it says expansion board module. Expansion board module. That could be interesting. Right. We've got some Rappy Rappy. Let's see. Ah. Now that's not an expansion board module. Right, I'll tell you what this is. Get into it. Quite simply, guys. This is a ruler. As you can see, we've got inches on one side, we've got the millimetres on the other side. Now what you'll notice is there's lots of other things on there. And this is really for prototyping boards. If you look, I've got track whips. I've got package sizes down here. I've got common, these are all for like surface mount items. Sock codes. All different chip sizes, even I've got some 8 pin chips, processor chips. Uh, that there, I believe, is wire gauge, the American wire gauge. Let's have a look at the back. And on the back, we've got some more chip packages sizes. Well, then you might ask, why did I get one of those? I'm not really going to use it as a ruler. But when we're dealing with N-Gage, I'm going to be using some tiny components. As you know, I use some very tiny LEDs as it is. So the plan is really that I want to see how big the packages are. If I know how big the package is, then I know what room I've got to play with. <laughs> I mean, if you imagine me if I do a lighting circuit in an N-Gage coach. This will actually tell me how big my resistors are, how big the LEDs are, uh, capacitor package sizes and all sorts of things. So that is really why I've got this. So yeah, it's a little bit different. It's a bit technical and it's more for sort of the design process. But yeah, that's what we've got. So it's a ruler. We'll move on to this now and see what it says. So there we go, this is the ruler I bought. So there are several different sizes. The one I went for was the 15 centimeter one. But there are different versions of this. We'll have a quick flick through. That's the version I bought. 
and as you can see it's got all the sizes on the back as well there's some slightly different versions if we look here i believe this is the 20 centimeter one and you've got degrees on there and you've still got more packages on there as well you can see there's all different ones that's got all sorts on it as well that's a 25 centimeter one we've got the degrees again we've got line thicknesses we've got package sizes wire gauges all sorts on there i don't know why the weight it it's only a ruler that's a very tiny one that one what's that one four centimeters nice for degrees and it's got some standard package sizes at the bottom that's quite nice oh that's a keychain that's clever right then shall we have a look what the description and the description oh pressing the wrong thing so the description what does it say about it versatile pcb ruler integrates relevant information for bbc pcb design and it shows you all the angles devices ic pin spaces tables and it's for electronic enthusiasts I, it'd be quite useful actually if i ever get into printed circuit boards but it shows you this the particular sizes that you're likely to use so yeah very very handy so there we go that is what i have received and then so the next parcel did say let's have a drink it says one times dc power line this without damaging it what is it it is oh losing them okay right these are got the cables on actually i got these the females no nope, they're the feet they're the males yeah they're the females right these uh, essentially let's get the little items out again let's look these should fit let's have a look shall we so that should fit into there yeah that's good that fits and let's try the other version and does this one fit into here yes it does right that's brilliant so these are wired 2.1 millimeter male and female <laughs> now then the reason i bought wired is because sometimes i want to do a project and to be honest I, I don't really want to mess around with soldering wires on sometimes you want something quick and easy so my thoughts were i bought this project a little while ago this is it's just a relay it's a 12 volt relay which is quite nice it's, it's in its own little box flip it open there we go now you might notice it's got a wire on it and that is because we have a remote for it now this is powered by 12 volts so my thoughts were just to make it nice and easy i'll get one of these i can wire that straight up through the box into the actual box then i can set my normal connections out and what i was thinking of doing in all honesty is feeding the 12 volts through my relay and then having an output so i'll use one of these maybe as an output like that and essentially I could then make a device that's got power in 
power out and it's just feeding 12 volts that's the idea and it's a quick and easy circuit and using these all i'm doing is stripping some wires and you know instead of soldering that's like a five minute project so that was the idea there yes i could have gone the traditional route i do have some of these plugs that i could have made up a cable and i've got these that i sometimes use on project boxes and these are the the panel mounted version of these well on this case i just wanted a box that had a wire in a wire out so i can have 12 volts going in 12 volts going out i just click a button it turns it on click a button it turns it off so that is why we've gone for these so yeah very interesting so we'll have a quick look at the listing see what the listing says so here we go it's just 10 pieces which is what i've got i've got five of each and it's a male and female dc power socket chat plug connector and it's 55 for 2.1 which is the size that i use so we'll, we'll take a little look down here does it say anything length of cables 27.5 it'll take 5 amps 60 watts transmission voltage 1 volt to 38 volts which is fine because in modern railway I mean, the max we'd probably go up to is about 18 volts maybe on the AC so that's not bad that works use the temperature and it should have some photos which it's not showing me but I'm not worried about that let's in fact if i click on to that there we go so they come in a bundle five male five female just a, a quick and easy way of actually just connecting things up and in this way i don't even have to solder on these but it's just a useful thing to have when i'm messing around with my projects one thing i also forgot to mention is i have just a uh, this is just an AC power adapter, which gives me 12 volts, 3 amps. And on the end of this, it's just a jack plug. As it happens, this is also 2.1. So happy days. So there we go, guys. Another use. All right, then. So this is the last of my items now. Any idea? Hobby Pro. It's from Poland. It's coming in a nice little box. I've got no idea how to get into this box. So let's just cut it open and see what happens. Let's be away. Oh. Right. we got here All right modeling paper 10 sheets okay All right ah I remember this this is the VMS range we've got some paper shaper some metal prep airbrush thinners and some acrylic binder oh there's one more and we've got some flexi 5k ca well i've seen a lot of modelers using this stuff recently by vms so i thought i'd have a little look we'll give it a try now then this item caught my eye this is flexi 5k ca now super glue normally goes very very brittle this claims that you know it's for photo etch there are different kinds for different products and it claims that you can use this on photo etch and it's just a little bit more resilient it's just got a bit more flexibility to it so you're not likely to knock it off as you would something brittle and i've got some brass over well some brass overlays that i want to do on some coaches now traditionally you would maybe use 
something like impact adhesive or five minute epoxy people have used super glues in the past but they've said they've got brittle i'm going to try this stuff and we're just going to crack on and we'll see if it works it'll either work or it won't simple as so that's the idea with this anyway so that's the flexi now what else i've got here this is the metal prep and again it's as it says, it's it's really for preparing your photo etch. It's just, um, what can I put it? It's a bit like an etch primer. That's probably the easiest way. You brush it on. You can spray any paint over the top. Job done. And I've seen this being used for very, very good effect. So I thought I'd give this a try. Now these guys that produce this stuff, VMS, they are modellers, so the modellers produce into the modelling hobby. This is always a very, very good sign, because I've got an idea what you want. Now then, these things, it was really the paper shaper that caught my eye on this occasion. This paper shaper, I've seen modellers using this with like tarpaulins and things like that. And I thought, that's not actually a bad idea. I don't do that. I mean, if I was to do a tarpaulin, I would maybe just use tissue paper and very, very thin down PVA. But I wanted to give this stuff a try. And to be honest, I've got it with the actual paper that they supply. I wanted to see how thin this actual paper was. So it's more of a nosy than anything. Well, let's even get into this without damaging it too much. Right let's have a look oh my that is extremely thin paper oh i like that i'm not sure if it tells you what weight it is no it doesn't tell me what weight the paper is but that's that's very very thin paper and to be honest one of the ideas i had for this was we got the old metcalf market stalls and in here as you know i've got let's get it out oh that's different that's about half the thickness of that paper on there that's very interesting anyway back to the metcalf right on the metcalf as you see it's all stripey and i'm not sure i want my market to have stripes i'm really not sure about that so my thoughts are I'm going to probably use some of this paper. With this I might be able to get a few ripples in it as well. Here's the actual stalls. So there's a stall that I made up. And what I'm hoping to do is I want to put the roof on the top. And I might even have it coming down the back and down the sides as well. So it's all enclosed. And then I might even just have a little bit of a, a, a curtain at the bottom. That was my actual plan for these. I mean, on this one, the bigger one, I might just do the actual roof over the top. On the little ones, I don't know. I might do the roof over the top. I might have it coming back down the back. That wouldn't be actually be a bad idea, that, actually. I might do that. And hopefully this stuff here, this should enable me to do that. So this is going to be a little play thing. And I want you to know how thin that paper was. And I can't believe how thin that paper actually is. Where are you going to get that thickness of paper from? I'm not sure. That I'm going to have to research. Ask them what grand paper they use. But yeah, this and the paper shape. This came in like a starter set. And in this starter set, I've also got airbrush thinners. And I've got some acrylic binders. Wet FX, I've got no idea what that is. Obviously, airbrushed it as well, that's obvious. But it came as a starter set, so I thought, yeah, we'll have a little tinker with that. So, we've got some VMS products, they're not cheap by any stretch, but if they do the job and they do it well, that'll do for me. So, we'll take you over and we'll have a look at the listings. So here we go, this is showing the Flexi 5K CA. So that's where it came from. We've got the, the seller here. And let's have a look and see what it says about it. 
we'll do lots of other projects so basically they're saying there that it's good for for um, bonding ca uh, let's have a look so it says there it's for photo etch parts it's easy to position and fix them well generally use ca bombs to quickly to position the parts well forms brittle bond and attacks plastic flexi 5k is the opposite of standard ca and it comes in a 25 millimeter bowl so i would say maybe it takes a little bit longer to dry but it's not brittle it's more durable which is what we're wanting it's telling me there a little bit about painting and weathering there's all sorts of information here which is what i like to see go down a little bit more he says it's the company's favourite glue for cementing photo etch parts. Well, I would think so, because that's what it's designed for. It doesn't go brittle. Don't lose the parts. You will be able to glue tricky bits, both PS and metal, that produce tension. Flex is less aggressive and more easily removed when necessary. Doesn't eat plastic as classic CAs so that's promising as well it's one of the reasons i've actually always stuck to you but it, it's not so aggressive on the plastic oh we've even got a video there that we can watch if you want to watch a video it's it's telling you how to dispense it what to use a glue applicator idea It's in a blob of glue is good about 45 minutes out of its dispense it gets thicker over time best results to conserve your glue dispense small blobs always have a small amount of fresh glue at your disposal it tells you how to get it off as well so there we go so that's the 5k Photo etch glue. Oh, well, this is the metal prep. This is for photo etch. Well, I've, been, I've seen a lot of kit builds recently where they've actually just brushed this on on the actual fret. Then they've gone and spray paint, painted the fret, and everything's good. Uh, everybody seems to be quite happy with it. It says for pe better paint to metal adhesion. It's showing you a few models there. It will be much more durable if applied over parts primed with our metal primer. Well, that's what I'm hoping for. I'm hoping it's going to be better using this primer. Applied with a brush, visible after application. That's always useful to know. Again, it comes with a video link. So that's nice to see. And there we go. Metal prep 4K is a primer for photo etch and other metal parts boost, boost, boosting paint adhesion on mitigating problems such as paint peeling at vulnerable areas, paint scuffing or general pull adhesion of acrylic paints. Paint coats proceed, it's preceded by metal prep 4K can get a much more desirable durability. Product is applied with a brush to form a translucent thin film which will affect any model detail. Part of please degrees of metal parts with BMS styrene cement standard type by application of primer. I'm not sure about that. I mean, degreasing parts, yes, I agree with that, but I would probably stick to some IPA. And, you know, in some cases, you know, depends what it actually is that you, you're degreasing. If it's, if it's the back end of it, then you might want to, I'm not sure. It's just standard practice to clean uh, parts, I suppose. But I don't necessarily think you actually need to use BMS Stein Cement Standard for application of the primer. I'm not sure about that. But yeah, we'll take a look at that and what we've got in this one. Uh, this was a little bundle. This is the paper shaper, the thinner, the binder and the products. Let's have a look down here then. So 
So we'll get one bottle of paper shaper, 10 sheets, acrylic binder, acrylic thinner. Okay, we know that. Is that all it says? And that is all it says. So it doesn't really sell me much there. But well, that's not bad. But I don't know about this. Modeling paper, 10 sheets. You've seen the size of the packet, guys. And that's how much it is just for that packet. £13. Not sure about that next time. Now I've seen the stuff, I might actually find out what paper weight is. You know, how many grams it is. And we we'll, we'll might try and source some more paper out for that. So I'm really not sure about the modeling paper. But... Yeah, we'll give these products a try and we'll see how we get on from there. So there you go guys. This is the roundup of the midweek mailbag. This is just the first video. And as you can see, we haven't done bad. We've got some DC and male female leads. We've got the plugs that we can just screw into the wires. We've got the VMS stuff. We've got the paper shaper, the metal prep, the flexi F. 5kca acrylic binders and thinners of course the paper and we've got these for the prototyping of the boards for the Arduino and other projects we've got the male duponts we've got the female header pins going to the crocodile clips and this fancy little pcb ruler which is just giving me some ideas of how big items actually are it's easy enough looking online and seeing the item, but when it's all blown up, I, don't, I have no idea how big that chip actually is. And I'm hoping that this will actually show me. So, yes, we, we like that. In fact, I'm just looking at that. 201, 402-603-805-1206-1210. And another ah twelve ten thirty two twenty five twelve ten fifty twenty five and they're all sort of packages that I use for LEDs. I say something new on this every time I look. Anyway, put that down, Tony. Forget about it. Right, I hope you enjoyed that guys, something a little bit different and we'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.